Hey kids, I'm Ryan and I am so excited you guys are here today. We're gonna start off with some really cool worship, then we'll have some amazing games and some fun activities. Make sure your parents go online to get the parent guide and let's start with some worship right now. All right, yeah, woo! Sometimes it's easy to feel like I've given all I got Is there anything more? I get down, get stuck, boxed in, locked up I gotta get moving, moving Gotta get moving, moving And all I see right in front of me Are endless possibilities Birds flying high and the planets in the sky We're talking about creativity while we take a look at how God wired you for something special. Hey, aren't you glad you get to hang out with me today? Get it? Orange? Like, like, aren't you? Never mind. Thank you. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about creativity. Which is using your imagination to do something new. So, you got a new purpose for this orange? Well, it's hard to beat the number one classic. Actually, we both came up with new ideas for using an orange. You want to go first? Sure. I present to you, drum roll please, the Orangiferous Flambeau. I have no idea what you just said. Oh. The Orange Rind Candle. That's not a candle. It's not a candle yet. Let's make it. Step one, completely dig the fruit out of half an orange, leaving the rind and the center stem. In order to dig the fruit out best, I recommend you start on the outer edge and then work your way, making very sure not to get all the way through on the bottom so you don't damage that center wick. I will be allowed to eat this. Correct? Oh, absolutely. Yummy. It's very, very 
messy and gooey. These are some great oranges. Now that I've gotten all the way around the edge, I can work on the center being very careful to get right next to that wick, but not to damage it. And done. Step two, pour vegetable oil over and around the wick like this. And step three, light the wick. Voila, an orangiferous flambeau. That is surprisingly cool. I mean, for a fruit candle. Hm. You got something better? Actually, I do. Let's make something else. What are the balloons for? Here, blow these up. Okay, that's it. This better be worth it, whatever this is. We only needed one. Oh. We're making an instant balloon popper. Oh, I have a bunch of those. No, 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 no. We're going to pop these balloons without touching them. I'm listening. It's super simple. Start by slicing off part of an orange, like this. You can dig out the fruit with a spoon or just eat it. That's good. Fold the peel like this, skin side out. Zeke, please hold up a balloon for me. Now. This is very important. Squeeze the peel at the balloon. Whoa! That was amazing! Let's see that again. Oh, I, I couldn't even see that we need slow-mo. Orange peels contain a chemical called limonene. When limonene is sprayed on a balloon, it causes the rubber to dissolve. This weakens the balloon, which pops. Whoa. Who knew the humble orange could be used for so many different purposes? Speaking of purpose, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is one of 21 letters in the New Testament. The leaders of the early church wanted to teach Jesus followers what was true, and they often wrote letters to do that. The apostles wanted everyone to know that Jesus is God's promised one to save the world. They also wrote about the radical new way Jesus wants us to live. In the Roman Empire, people like women, children, poor people, and enslaved people were viewed as worthless with no hope of something better. But within the church, all people were viewed as equal because the believers knew that God loves everyone. The Apostle Paul wrote one of these letters to the believers in the church at Ephesus, which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, guess who? It's Brian. Ephesus was a major cultural center where people worshipped Greek and Roman gods. But Paul began a brand new church in the city and taught there for three years. Both Jewish and non-Jewish people became believers in Jesus during that time. Though Paul left the city to continue his travels, the church was still on his heart. So about 10 years after he arrived in Ephesus, Paul wrote a letter that became the book of Ephesians. I, Paul, I'm sending this letter to you, God's holy people in Ephesus. Now we're focusing on something incredible Paul wrote in chapter two, verse 10. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Okay, there is so much packed into that one verse, so let's dig in a little deeper. To start with, we are God's creation. Yeah, we didn't happen by accident. In the very beginning, God created people. They were created in God's image. Every single person to ever live has been made by God. Earlier in Ephesians, Paul wrote, God chose us before the world was created. He loved us. Do you hear that? God knew you 
and loved you before the world even existed. And God knows every single detail about you. Luke wrote, in fact, he even counts every hair on your head. Yeah, even if that's zero. Not only are we created by God, but Paul went on to say, God created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now, we know that every living or moving thing needs fuel, right? Cars were designed to run on gas or electricity. They must have fuel to function. And even some houses are designed to use alternative energy. They're fueled by the sun or maybe even by wind power. But God designed people to run on connection with Jesus. Sure, we need food and water for our bodies, but without Jesus, we don't run very well. When we try to live well and love others on our own, we eventually get burned out and, and maybe frustrated. But when we stay close to Jesus, He gives us the power to live a brand new life. Which takes us to the last part of the verse. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Hear this. Doing good things cannot earn salvation. That's totally God's gift to you. But doing good things can be an outflow of our love for God and God's work in our hearts. Now, with that in mind, remember how God imagined you before the creation of the world? Just like no one else has your unique fingerprints, God designed you to have gifts and talents that are not quite like those of anybody else ever. God has planned things for you to do that no one else can do in quite the same way. God has designed us all to love God and love others. But we each have a special way of doing that. Maybe someday you'll fly halfway around the world to tell others about Jesus. Or maybe you'll simply know the best way to show kindness to the quiet kid in your class everyone else ignores. The more time you spend with Jesus talking and listening throughout the day, the more you will begin to understand what God made you for. You can also ask your family and grown-ups who know you well. They might see things about your purpose that you don't. Now let's hear it one more time. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Whatever your good works may be, you can't go wrong by showing love to the people around you, just as Paul encouraged the Ephesians. The end. Wow, can you imagine being part of one of the first churches before people even knew what a church was? It's crazy. I mean, the church was literally trying to turn everything upside down. And Paul wanted the Ephesians to know what an important role they had to play. So what's our part in the story? Well, Paul explained how the Ephesians were created for specific good works, and that's true for each of us too. If you want to know what your purpose is, start by asking questions. What do I love to do? What things come easily to me? What do people around me need? What makes me sad or angry? Yeah, great, those are great questions. If you love to bake, <laughs> maybe part of your purpose is to brighten people's day with yummy cookies. Or by making them laugh, if that's your thing. If it really hurts your heart to know that families in your community don't have enough to eat, maybe your purpose is helping to collect food. Yeah, your purpose might not look like anybody else's, and that's okay. Remember that God made you in a unique way. And that staying connected to Jesus is where your purpose starts. I think you got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. God created you for a purpose. And when you know your purpose, you can light up the whole world around you. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next, next time. time. Hey, you got any more balloons? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try popping one. Are right, you ready? One, two, two three.